The story of Grady Stiles is both fascinating and horrifying. Grady Stiles was a famous freak show performer, but his life took several dark turns and ended in cold blood. Grady Stiles was born in 1937 with a deformity called ectrodactyly. Ectrodactyly is a genetic condition in which a person's fingers and slash or toes are fused. This gives the appearance of a claw-like hand or foot. It is a split hand or cleft hand that involves the deficiency or absence of one or more central digits of the hand or foot and is also known as split hand slash split foot malformation, SHFM. Ectrodactyly was in Stiles' family for several generations, going back about 130 years before he was born. His father also had the condition and performed in a carnival sideshow attraction. He brought Grady into his act when he was just seven years old. Stiles' case was pretty severe, in addition to his hands, he also experienced ectrodactyly in his feet, and therefore could not walk. For most of his life, he primarily used a wheelchair, but also learned to use his upper body to pull himself across the floor with impressive strength. Limited by these deformities, Stiles grew up confined within the carnival world, and later on, fell in love with another carnival worker named Mary Teresa. The couple soon married and had two children named Donna and Kathy. Kathy was born with the same deformity but Donna was not. As time progressed, Mary Teresa Stiles realized she had married an angry and violent man. Grady's life was plagued by alcoholism and anger issues. He was extremely abusive towards his family, especially when drunk. Eventually, he threw his wife and children out. Mary then married another circus performer named Harry Glenn Newman and had a son together who was given the same name as his father, although he was mentally impaired. With what happened, Grady was more enraged and eventually filed for divorce and won custody of the children due to Mary not attending court. Then Grady married Barbara Browning, who produced another child with the lobster syndrome, Grady III. When Grady remarried, his little girl Donna was arranging their wedding. Grady didn't care for Donna's life partner. On the night before the wedding, he asked her life partner to approach the house just to talk. Grady rather took a shotgun and killed him on the spot. As Donna held her draining life partner while he passed on, her dad said, I told you I would kill him. He grinned. Grady went to trial in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he pleaded guilty to third-degree murder. He not even once showed any regret. Notwithstanding, since there was no jail or foundation in the express that was prepared to deal with a prisoner with his condition he had cirrhosis of the liver which demolished his actual weakness he was only sentenced to 15 years probation. It's said that after the occurrence, Donna never addressed her dad again. However, in one way or another, Grady's first wife, Mary, moved back to him. She left Harry and remarried Grady for the reason that he was a renewed person who might quit drinking and alter his way of life. Foreseeably, he didn't change. He soon fell back into his typical pattern of drinking and abuse, often threatening to kill his wife and his family. Mary allegedly suffered from being gagged by him. She would awaken to discover him holding a blade to her throat. He likewise explicitly mishandled her and once attempted to cover her with a cushion after she proposed getting a separation. By 1992, Mary was terrified for the lives of herself and her family. She thinks something needs to be done. She and her son Harry Glenn Newman Jr. came into contact with a 17-year-old man named Chris Wyand who is said to have a gang relationship with him. They paid him $1,500 to murder Grady. When Grady was sitting in the living room of the trailer room in his underwear, Wyant walked in and shot him in the back of the head. He was only 55 years old when he was murdered. Glenn underwent a polygraph test during the police investigation, but he failed. He collapsed, acknowledging what happened. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. His mother Mary was sentenced to 12 years in prison for conspiracy to murder. 
Wyant was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to 27 years in prison.